Hi guys, Angela with Andy Styles Boutique and welcome to our channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you're a repeat viewer, welcome back. If you're a subscriber, mwah, thank you guys so much for rocking with us. We love you. So today's video is going to be one about wreath making. Um, it is a totally beginner's um, video. So if you're not a beginner, you may not, you don't have to say. Um, if you are a beginner and you want to know more about it, you want to know the ins and outs before you jump in, um, this will be the video for you. Now, I get it. Uh, I will understand if you don't stay, um, if it's boring you because you already know a lot of the stuff, um, I'm okay with that. So, uh, if you are not a member and you like what we do, please hit that subscribe button below. We are inviting you to be part of our family. Uh, let's get into it. All right. So with wreath making, a lot of what you're going to do, um, before you even get to techniques or deciding what technique you like, uh, over this one or that one is you're going to need some tools. You're going to need some supplies. And we're going to talk about that for a second. Now, first thing you're going to need when you're making any type of wreath is you're going to need some wreath forms. That's what these are called. So these are wreath forms. As you can see, there are a lot. They come in many different styles and shapes. These are the round wreath forms. This one is uh, 20 inch. And I think it's the largest one you can get. So this is a 20 inch. This one was purchased at Hobby Lobby. Then this one is, I want to say a 12 inch, hang on, wait a minute, let's see, no, this is a 16, sorry, and this is a 12, and they're also from Hobby Lobby, I want to... Sorry guys, I'm challenged here. So the 20 inch was $4.99. The 12 inch was $2.99. And this one I want to venture out and say was uh, a lot of dollar more. Um, then I have more 12 inch. Then this one is a eight inch and it was a dollar ninety-nine. Okay. Now I do like these because they are a little sturdier than the ones I get from Dollar Tree. However, I do use the Dollar Tree reforms as well. The Dollar Tree has a few more varieties and shapes. Uh, the brand from Dollar Tree is called floral garden this is a spoke wheel this one is just a picture frame reform and it's a dollar tree one um let's see i have a candy cane that i got from dollar tree these are all you can, ones you can get from Dollar Tree. I bought this one from Dollar Tree. Another spoke. Another picture frame, square, whatever you want to call it. Um, they also have uh, pumpkin ones, candy canes, and so on and so forth. Um, well, I showed you that, but they have different um, shapes depending on whatever is going on. This is just a, a floral wire you can use to make a wreath. And then I'm sure you guys have seen these too. You can use to make a wreath. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. So that's um, one of the things you're going to need if you're going to make wreaths is some type of wreath form to put your um items or your supplies you're going to use to create the wreath with. Now, give me one second. Let me put these away and we'll come back and talk about some other things. Okay. So I forgot about these. This is a plastic wreath board that I have used to 
uh, make a make wreaths with and I use this when I'm doing the um, tool it's really good for that then you have this um, plastic wreath form as well and I use these when I make tool wreaths as well so I forgot about that part all right let me go put these away all right so your next step in your wreath making journey is going to um, the supply list is your items you're going to use to make your wreath this video, I'm talking about uh, mesh, all right? There are different forms of mesh that, uh, that you can use to make wreaths. And I have some favorites that I like, and then there's some that I'm, I wanna throw in the trash, but I paid for it. All right, so this is a fabric mesh, and it feels just like fabric. This is honestly my favorite mesh to use because it's more, it works a little more easily with me and what I'm trying to do. And it, there's no fraying or it is, it'll fray if you don't cut it right, but there's not a thousand little pieces lying around unless you don't cut it right. This is a regular uh, a mesh that we, this is a more popular brand. Let's see, this is called just polyester okay this is polyester mesh that's what this is there's some fraying here however if you use the right scissors you'll be able to get past that this i have to let you guys know will get stuck and it, it tends to stick and hang to every, uh grab onto everything so if you're using that keep keep that in mind bear that in mind what i try to do when i'm doing the polyester mesh is I'll try to just work with that by itself. I'll, and it, I know it's probably the longer way, but I prefer to do that than to have them all over the table. And then they get, um, you know, uh, tangled up and I have to spend extra time untangling them. them sorry, the Southern came out. All right, this is a weatherproof mesh. And this is what it is. It's, it's, it's a mesh that you can actually use to um, hang outside, you know, when you put your wreaths and stuff outside, this is supposed to help weather the storm. Now, there's uh, more uh, mesh. This one is a decorative mesh, and I got this from um, Joann's. Let me see, give me one second. The mesh also comes in more sizes as well. Uh, this is a jute ombre mesh. And this one is um, another polyester. So I said that to let you know that the, the options are endless when you're talking about mesh. Okay? Um, you don't have to... Uh, you can look and look and look and look and you probably won't even hit the surface of all that's available and this is a different size mesh this is a, a longer uh, this is 21 by 10 9 and a half by 19 and this one is 5 by 5 so when you are making your wreaths you want to be consistent with your measurements your sizes of your wreath or your mesh. I wouldn't make a wreath with this uh, length and then come in and try to include this. That's just, uh, it's gonna cause you some headache. It's your, your um, symmetry is gonna be off and you're gonna end up spending more time trying to convert this to the same size as this. So be consistent when you choose your sizing. Nor would I throw this one in with these. You see how off that's, that is? And what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna have higher pieces of mesh and this is gonna get lost in the fray. Uh, Dollar Tree also sells mesh. And yes, I have some under my table. I don't care for their mesh. I don't like it. It frays way too much. So those of you who can find the Dollar Tree mesh and make it work for you, come to the front of class. I need you to the front of class. I got questions. So anyway, um, I don't, 
I tried. I gave it the old college try and it just did not work for me. So I do order my mesh from another company and I'll try to see if I can find it and put that in the the, the list. But Julie's Reef Boutique, she uh, makes a lot of nice, awesome uh, reefs and she has a list of people that she um, push promotes, not pushes, promotes. And I got the names of those uh, vendors from watching a few of her videos. All right, so that's the part on mesh. All right, let me put this away and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so I know I said I was gonna put the stuff up, but I found some more mesh and this is um, a poly burlap mesh that I purchased. I found, this is thin stripe fabric mesh. I think that's it. All right, so anyway, I want you to see those ton of mess. You'll never run out of options. Okay. Promise you that. Okay. Next up on the supply. <laughs> All right. Next up on the supply list is your Chanel stem. Now, um, these very, very explain. I mean, just, you know, Chanel stems, pipe cleaners, whatever you want to call them. You're going to need these and a lot of them. Now, because you use a lot of these, you may opt to skip for the cheap don't. Don't do that. This is a sturdier one. I paid more for this. This is a thinner one. You don't want that movement when you're trying to tie your mesh ribbons in one piece. These are Dollar Tree. These I got from, I think, Hobby Lobby. This is their packaging. Don't skimp on this. Um, even if you're going to try a cheaper mesh, if you're going to even try the Dollar Tree mesh, um, I would say I'll, if you're skimping there, don't skimp on the um, Chanel stems or the pipe cleaners because you're doing things with your hands. You're doing a lot with your hands and you don't want this to move just as much as your hands, okay? Okay. That's just my opinion, and that's how I feel about that. <laughs> All right, so uh, another supply that you're going to need. Uh, and what happened to my uh, scissors? You're going to need a good pair of scissors. I have used the big, um, sturdy stainless steel ones. I love these. They're good for cutting the mesh uh, without a lot of fraying. Also, your uh, I'm a stylist. So the hair cutting shears that you can get from Sally, they are excellent with cutting mesh. And it also uh, cuts down on the fraying. Now I'm going to cut a couple pieces here. So let's move this down just so you can see um, how good these scissors are. So you want to uh, have adequate at working space. That's another thing. You want to make sure that the spot you're working with is adequate. So what I like to do is to roll my mesh out and I'll roll it. I'll give it two good turns. And just cut it. I try to go full length with the scissors because that also uh, stops me from having to cut it so much. So see, that's a good edge. And even with it being a little jagged, there's, not fr there's no fraying there. So when I go in to pinch it and close it up for my ribbon, you don't see a lot of shavings, okay? Um, so yeah, and then... Let me go ahead and assemble this since I have this part here. I do apologize for my voice. I am getting over a really hostile um, sinus infection. So that's that. And you see, like, like I said, I do have a little fraying. So I just go in and clip that. But some of the, the mesh that I've used... The frame was serious. It was, it was, it was intense. So 
your scissors is going to make an impact on how your project looks and how your rolls look and how your wreath looks overall. So um, I purchased these scissors at Ross. Uh, don't sleep on their craft section. Okay, so these are this. This is what you want when you start to cut this. And um, when I go in and trim, I don't go straight down. I go at an angle as well, uh, so it won't keep unraveling where it was. All right, so there's that. The next thing that you're gonna need, next supply, is you're gonna need. Some type of ornament, ornamental de decoration or fl floral. This is floral, not ornamental. So you'll need a floral, some type of flowers. You don't have to have it, but you're, you'll need something to decorate. So there's flowers. Uh, if you're doing seasonal, you have these, this type of stuff. If you just want simple greenery, Ivy is always fashionable, okay? This lamp. But Ivy is always fashionable on the menu. Um, then I picked this up because it reminded me of snow and Christmas, so that'll be on a Christmas wreath. You can do flowers. Um... I have some of these things. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of options that you can use when it comes to creating your wreaths. So these are basic supplies that you're gonna need. Um, you can also add wood pieces. Um, I have things like, hello. I got this from Hobby Lobby. They had these on sale. So I got them when they were on sale. I didn't pay full price for them. Absolutely not. All right. Um, this is a Dollar Tree sign. They do have some nice ones. I don't know why this is dark. All right. They, they have these. Um, this one was a Hobby Lobby find on sale. So it's just a gray one. It says happiness is a kitchen full of family. I don't know. Somebody might want to read for their kitchen. These little cute things I got from the Dollar Tree in Los Angeles when I was traveling for work. I picked them right on up. Sure did. Um, and then the last one I picked up was this one. And it says grateful, thankful, blessed. It's going to be on a, I'm gonna take these apart and put it on the individual, I think the 12 inch form is what I'm gonna use. All right, so you'll also need a ruler. Um, I have a yardstick that I purchased that I'm going to tape onto the table here. Just hadn't made it here yet, so yeah. All right, so those are, that's your supply list. Now, uh, as far as technique, <clears throat> okay, so this is me getting ready to assemble the wreath. And um, hopefully you have learned from the previous steps and the other information I did prior to getting to this step. So to assemble off camera, I did um, some of these. Um, I actually just rolled up some to try to get my color scheme going and I decided I was going to add this one to it as well so you get to see that now earlier in the video I said sorry you can use a yardstick so this is the one I purchased that I couldn't find and I'm just going to assemble that onto my workstation here in a spot where I can it won't be in my way all right so but that's not right now so we're just going to move it i just wanted you to see the yardstick it'll help with when you're um measuring and you want to do things exact or precise and there's nothing absolutely nothing wrong with that 
because as crafters, we all uh, march to the beat of our own drum. So this is fabric mesh here. It's a little flimsier than what, I, what the other ones were, but I still love, I'm digging the colors that it's gonna bring to my um, wreath. I'm just gonna do, gonna do about maybe 10 to 15 of these just to, um, because I want, this is gonna be a Thanksgiving theme, fall theme, pumpkin spice type um, wreath. So I'm going to make sure, I wanna make sure that I have enough of the colors. Um, I was gonna make orange, the centerpiece, but I decided that maybe we can throw some other colors in there as well. Um, I don't really count how many of these uh, ribbons I use. I just make them and go, I make what I think is gonna be enough. And then um, I go with that. If I need to add more, I'll add more, etc. Now, with these ribbons, you can make them as small or as large as you want. The size is determined by how loosely or tightly you roll your mesh. So keep that in mind. If you want bigger loops, you're going to do bigger rolls, wider rolling. If you want a smaller one, you're going to do tighter like I just did there. Hold on one second, let me cut it, and I will show you what I mean. All right, this is a smaller, <clears throat> compared to this one. So see, that can go in there. All right, so remember that when you're, you, when you're rolling your mesh, it really depends on if you want wide loops, not on how much you roll out or you cut off because you can always, always, always make them smaller or larger, um, regardless of how much you cut. Um, if you cut a lot, you can just be rolling a lot if you want smaller ones. If you cut a small amount, you won't roll as much. So, um, Keep that in mind as you are rolling out your, or creating your ribbons. I don't know how many I've cut. But I'm gonna cut more. Now I've all, used almost all of my package of um, Chanel stems, so you wanna use that as a guide. As to how many you're doing. I just roll, like I said, I just do until I think I have enough and then I'll start from there. But you always have to trust the process too. Um, trust your process, if nothing else. Especially when you're assembling, it may look like it's not gonna work. All right, so that's all of these that I'm gonna cut for now. I may have to revisit it, not sure. All right, so I have them everywhere. They are everywhere. Um, all right, now I need a wreath holder. And I have some tiny ones, but the I want to use this. And that's not going to work there, so let me grab a larger. Okay, so this is my <clears throat> progress so far. And this, I have decided to use this particular um, design that I got from the Dollar Tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this open part, I'm going to go ahead and insert this. I do this so I can see see how it's looking, if it's going to fit, and how much more I need to 
add, okay? So I'm going to, this is the, ah, sorry. Uh, it's gonna fit in here. It does say welcome. Get it in there really good. And I'm going to move. I'm work, I was working on this second ring. So now we're going to work on ring two and uh, three and four. Because I don't want to continue working on the second, the inside and cover up my design. So this um, particular... Um, what am I trying to say? It has these strings. So I'm going to use these strings to help to adhere the this to my, my wreath, the sign to my wreath. So I'm just going to go ahead and work it through here. And then I'll, not, I'm not sure if I'm going to hot glue it or not to help it stay on the back. But anyway, I wanted to show you, sometimes you have to take a stop, depending on what sign you're gonna use, and then reassess. So, I'm gonna leave this in here, and I'm going like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start working from two, uh, the first two rings at the top. And I'm gonna, I wanna see how it's gonna look as well because you don't want to overshadow your um, accent piece and I, that's what this is this is my accent piece so I don't want it overshadowed but I still want this all the way around so I don't know if it's going to work or not we're, we're going to see you know that's where that trust the process comes in gonna do like this is like a to see how it's gonna look just gonna keep working here to see where we're going or how it's going. And I guess what I could have done was went ahead and filled this in and tried to assemble the welcome sign on the top. I could have done that. We shall see. I think. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna go with it. I kind of like the way it's looking. I know I need to add some more ribbons to it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut some more ribbon. I like it. All right, I'm gonna finish it up and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to cure the back. Okay, so I have assembled my wreath. This is the wreath. This is the out 
come. This is the how it looks. And I like it. I'm just that artist. I I like it. I Okay, anyway. Never I digress. All right, so let me show you how that so this you got all this in the back. All these pieces, you don't want to keep those poked out like that because they hurt. Some people will use wire cutters to cut them. Um, I braid mine. Let me show you. So I move my ribbons out of the way as much as possible. Okay. Um, this also tightens up the wreath, holds your ribbons in place, and stops them from moving every which way. So I just go in. You can twist or you can braid. We're just going to twist it. Okay. So I just grab two and I just start twisting them around. And I twist them until I meet the next section, which is right here. So then I'll go and I'll start twisting this section around till I get to the next section. And then I'll twist that around. It gives a cleaner look on the back. And it also helps, like I said, to keep your, your ribbons intact. Now, sometimes I have to take a break because this is hard, the twisting, and come back to it because I want it to look nice, neat, uniform, and I don't want to, um, I don't want the fact that my arms or fingers are getting tired to take away from the look, okay? All right, so just move your wreath around, twist. And as you can see, the, the new edition is the one that's receiving the twisting, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. So go ahead and twist this. Then I have this new edition here. Gonna twist that on around. It's doing the work for me. Then we'll take it to get a new new section. Twist that on around. Now, if you have some pieces sticking up out of, after you've twisted it, by all means, use a wire cutter to get those little pieces. Sometimes you can do a you can cut out a circle and cover this part with that, but I don't do that. Um, there's many ways you can cover the wires that's sticking out. Um, you don't have to do it my way, which is the way I'm doing it if you don't want to. You may not have the finger strength to do the twisting, and that's perfectly okay because there is more than one way to skin a cat. This is just easier for me to do it this way. I can get it done without a lot of snipping with wire cutters, which I don't really enjoy that part. I tried the wire cutters, didn't enjoy it. And I thought to myself, there has to be a easier, better way. And this is what I found for myself. See how it's, it's looking? <clears throat> I don't know about where you live that's watching this, but fall is coming here in the Carolinas. And I'm telling you, my skin is unusually dry which it happens in the fall my scalp is dry so i have to do more um deep conditioning treatments for my curly hair 
but I have it braided up right now, which the reason I did that was to give my hair a break uh, from being exposed to the fall weather because it tends to change in fall and winter. So my hair care routine has to change as well. <clears throat> and working on an airplane doesn't help where the uh, air is super dry. So I have started to uh, care for my skin a little better as well as a result of <laughs> the change in seasons. Um, I have to go from using a lotion on my skin after my shower to using a heavy cream, moisturizing cream on my skin. So that's the struggle I'm having right now. And I ended up with a sinus infection. That's why I sound nasally. And I do apologize for that. It was a, it was a tough one this time. And I didn't realize that I had a sinus infection until I was on the plane. I took a COVID test because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't COVID and it wasn't. Um, but it was a sinus infection that I flew with and I know not to be that or my doctor wouldn't want to hear me flying and having a sinus infection. She fuss at me. But anywho, um, I'm almost done here. I want you guys to see it. How the end result. And it does look neat. It, it does look nice and neat. Um, like I said, sometimes I have to stop because this is hard. Uh, once you start getting a big chunk of these, it tends to get a little challenging. It's not hard, it's just can be a little challenging because you're trying to twist everything together. All right, this is the last one. And I made it through the first time. All right, so this is the last piece to it. And I'm going to see if I can get it to connect to the other piece. It barely connects. So I'm just going to take and put it here. There we go. And I wedged it between my sign. Well, I'm trying to. See if we can get it a little more pointed. So I'm just taking another pipe cleaner and I'm wrapping it around to extend the length. Just I just need a, a tad. So I'm just going to go take this and go up under where I started and just twist it on. You can also add some hot glue here if you don't, you want to make sure it's good and secure. But this is the wreath, the back finished. This is the front. So now I got to go back and resituate my ribbons. So my um, centerpiece isn't
All right, she's ready. Let me grab a wreath hanger. Give me one second. All right, so here's a wreath hanger. I think I got this from Hobby Lobby or Joanne's, one of them. And I want to show you how this will hang on a wreath hanger. You know, since we did all that in the back, I want to show you that it will hang and you will not have any problems. So you just insert this here. And there's your wreath. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. I hope this was helpful. Um, that I tried to make this a, one, a tutorial on wreath making 101 or wreath making for beginners. I hope that I was helpful and I hope that this will help someone to get their creative wreath making juices going. Happy crafting. Okay, so this is my <clears throat> progress so far. And this, I have decided to use this particular um design that i got from the dollar tree so what i'm going to do is i'm going to this open part i'm going to go ahead and insert this i do this so i can see how it's looking if it's gonna fit and how much more i need to add okay so i'm going to this is the ah, sorry uh it's gonna fit in here. It does say welcome. Get it in there really good. And I'm going to move. I'm work. I was working on this second ring, so now we're gonna move, work on ring two and uh, three and four, because I don't want to continue working on the second, the inside and cover up my design. So this um, particular um, what am I trying to say? It has these strings. So I'm going to use these strings to help to adhere the this to my, my wreath, the sign to my wreath. So I'm just going to go ahead and work it through here and then I'll not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna hot glue it or not to help it stay on the back but anyway I wanted to show you sometimes you have to take a stop depending on what sign you're gonna use and then reassess so I'm gonna leave this in here and I'm going, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start working from two, uh, the first two rings at the top. And I'm going to, I want to see how it's going to look as well, because you don't want to overshadow your um, accent piece. And I, that's what this is. This is my accent piece. So I don't want it overshadowed but I still want this all the way around. So I don't know if it's gonna work or not. We're, we're gonna see, you know, that's where that trust the process comes in. I'm gonna do like, this is like a, to see how it's gonna look. keep working here to see where we're going or how it's going.
And I guess what I could have done was went ahead and filled this in and tried to assemble the welcome sign on the top. I could have done that. Shall y'all think all right we're gonna i'm gonna go with it i kind of like the way it's looking i know i need to add some more ribbons to it so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna cut some more ribbon I like it. All right, I'm gonna finish it up and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to secure the back. 